Ready to break free from algorithms, vanity PR, and money-sucking ads? My name's Larissa Wurstiak, and I've learned in seven years of jewelry marketing that content is the crown jewel. My agency, Joy Joya, takes a holistic approach, leading with laser-focused storytelling, impactful content creation, and strategic content distribution. This method has worked for the solopreneur as well as the multi-million dollar company, and now I'm sharing the same systems and tactics with you. Here's to standing out in the sea of sparkle. This is episode 255. And today we're diving deep into evaluating the impact of social media marketing with a particular focus on Instagram for your jewelry business. If you're a jewelry business owner or marketer, you know, it's often challenging to have a clear perspective on your social media strategy since you're so deeply involved. You probably often find yourself comparing your strategies to other brands, pondering whether you should or shouldn't emulate your competitors, but it's so important to remember that appearances can be deceiving. And without that insight into another business's operations, it's tough to know if their social media strategy is actually successful, regardless of how polished their online presence appears. So today we'll be looking at social media marketing through the experiences and lens of Hillary Fink Jewelry, the recipient of the Joy Joya Jewelry Marketing Grant. So we'll be exploring how social media aids her business, the evolution of her strategies over time, and her future aspirations for her online presence. For those joining this podcast series for the first time this season, I'd suggest going back and starting with episode 252. Doing so will introduce you to Hillary and allow you to follow this narrative from the beginning. Before jumping into our chat with Hillary, I'll share some insights to help you refine your own social media tactics. So let's dive into the world of Instagram marketing and beyond. But before we get to the solid gold, I'd like to take a moment to remind you that this podcast has both audio and video, so you can either listen on your favorite podcast platform or watch on YouTube by searching Joy Joya. You can support the podcast for free by taking the time not only to subscribe, but also to leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. All right, my sparklers, let's get into today's episode. So this one is all about social media marketing, understanding your current social media marketing performance, identifying the right questions to ask yourself, and exploring potential areas for improvement. Later in this episode, we'll be getting into the interview with Hillary, but until then, I'm going to kind of frame all these topics through the lens of Hillary's brand. So first things first, how can you make sense of where you're at with social media marketing? Two things, you're going to observe it objectively, And you're also going to look at the numbers. So when you observe it objectively, this might sound like a no brainer, like not anything mind blowing here, but I have to say very few brands take the time to step back every once in a while and look at how their social media marketing efforts are working as a whole and looking at them objectively. So like taking a step back, like a bird's eye view of how everything is working. I think especially with smaller businesses, the business owner or someone on the marketing team, usually you're so caught up in the moment and just focused on the day-to-day of posting and the demands of content creation that it's hard to just take a step back. So sometime, if it's like slow or it's like, I don't know, your slow season, whatever, take a couple of hours to do the following and document it somewhere. So ask yourself, which social media platforms are you active on? And how long has the brand been active on each one of these platforms? Are the bios up to date? Do they still make sense? Are all the links correct? Is there anything confusing about getting from the profile on the platform 
to a shoppable website? Do you have to do like multiple clicks or is it pretty straightforward? How often are you posting on each platform and why? I know that's like a crazy question, but like it's so important to take the time to explore that because a lot of brands don't even know why they're posting anymore. So what's the strategy behind the cadence or the frequency that you're posting? Is it just whenever you have a chance or is there an actual intention behind the posting strategy? And if a platform that you're using has multiple formats or surfaces, like for example, with Instagram, there's reels, carousel, stories, et cetera. How many of each type of those surfaces are you utilizing? What's like the ratio of one to another? Is it imbalanced? Are you really taking advantage of all the tools that are available to you? Also, what's the quality of the content that you're posting? And be honest, (laughs) could it be better? Does it really vary from one post to another? Is there a lack of consistency in the quality of the content? What voice and tone is being used across all the captions? Is it the same? Are there differences? What are those differences? Is all of this being done, again, with intention? That's the key word here. And then what are the calls to action? Are you always just telling people to shop? Are you not using calls to action at all? Are you sometimes asking people to comment or share? There are a lot of different ways to utilize calls to action. It's like, how can we bring more diversity and use that as a chance to really engage your audience? So after you observe objectively, you also want to look at your numbers because your own observations on their own can't tell the whole story. And I find the best way to do this, at least for Facebook and Instagram, is to log into your meta business dashboard. And then once you're in there, you can go to insights in the left-hand menu And then you go to content. And once you adjust the date range of the content that you're looking at, you're able to like filter by the platforms. You can either just look at Facebook or Instagram. You can look at both together. You can sort by things like reach, by likes and reactions. And I think it's so important to check in there to see, well, between this time and this time, usually on a monthly basis, what were my top performing posts on the platforms that I'm using? And then get curious about what do those posts have in common? Is there some sort of pattern in why they're performing well? Can you glean anything from that to apply to your future posting strategy? Also, so important, look at your lowest performing posts. What's the deal with those? Can you guess about why they did not perform as well? I have to admit, sometimes there's like no rhyme or reason as to why something performed well or didn't perform well. But usually you can see some kind of um, pattern emerge and then take those observations to your future posting strategy. And then if you have Pinterest, same thing, log into your Pinterest dashboard, see which pins have been performing the best, which have been performing the worst, and what do those all have in common, and what does that mean for your strategy? How can you continue evolving and improving on that moving forward? And then beyond just looking at the data within the platforms, you can log into Google Analytics and look at your traffic sources. So which platforms are driving the most traffic to your website? Which ones are lagging? Where are the opportunities? Where can you double down? So it's also so important to see what's actually driving traffic to your website because if you sell products there, the end goal is not to just have a stellarly performing Instagram. The goal is to drive sales on your website. So how does this all shake out for Hillary as the example that we'll be using and talking to her in just a few moments? 
We definitely looked at the data in her meta business suite, specifically for Instagram. That's where she's like the most active and devotes the most time and attention. And the reach of her Instagram posts is incredibly impressive. Recently, she had kind of like a viral post that wasn't in Hydro Quartz ring that had a reach of more than 22 million and had almost 200,000 likes. But it's at the same time, I know you're very impressed by that probably, it's an outlier. So not all her posts are getting in the millions for reach. But at the same time, there are things we could perhaps learn from this and apply to the future strategy. So in Hydro Quartz, people really seem to be captivated by that. It seems to be popular. We could also delve into storytelling and education behind this material and perhaps build out blog posts on the website. People seem to be really interested in in the courts. So it's important to kind of capitalize on that, of course, without straying too far from her own creative vision and what she wants to do with her products. But it's a little bit hard to ignore. I mean, if that gets the attention, we need to move a little bit in that direction. But at the same time, looking at Facebook, we noticed she doesn't put as much effort into there. It's usually repost from Instagram. I think there is some potential because people do follow and comment on her posts there. But we did notice from looking at the posts that had the best performance that what seems to perform well on Facebook is when she takes a more personal approach and like talks about herself and her products through her own lens. And that really makes so much sense for Facebook because people go on Facebook to like engage with their friends and family. So if something comes up on the feed that feels more genuine and personal, I think people are more likely to react to that than a more promotional or salesy type of post. So if you really want to start to get more inquisitive and reflective about your social media marketing strategy, again, it's all those observations that I just mentioned, but really so many questions that you should be asking yourself. And it's important like every few months to step back and ask these questions, because as I said earlier, you can get so caught up in the day-to-day demands of content creation that it's very easy to forget to take the time and reflect. So I have 10 questions for you to inspire you to be more reflective. Number one, what are my specific goals for social media marketing? Number two, Which social media platforms are most relevant to my target audience? And am I making the most of them? Am I giving my audience what they want? Number three, are my posts reflective of my brand's voice and aesthetic? Number four, are my posts generating traffic to my website or online sales platform? Number five, Do I have a clear call to action in most of my posts? Number six, how have my strategies evolved over the past year? Number seven, am I leveraging customer feedback for content ideas? Number eight, how am I balancing promotional content with value-driven content? Number nine, how do I stay updated with the latest social media trends and updates? And number 10, if there's been something I've been wanting to try with social media but haven't been able to, what is holding me and or my team back from doing that? And what steps can I or we take to move forward? And you may want to rewind and go back and listen to those questions again and take some notes, but that's a really good starting point for getting more reflective about your social media. And finally, I want to share some ideas where you may be able to improve and grow. 
because I see a lot of really common missed opportunities with jewelry brands. So these are some things you can try. And remember, they may or may not work for you. They may or may not be right for your brand. So it's important to not just (laughs) copy paste this, but think about, is it actually going to work for our goals and our audience? So one would be to consider a Pinterest presence. Since Pinterest is a visual platform that's suited for jewelry, the content is more long lasting. Consider live video and more video in general. Start thinking more about connecting, being social, less about promoting. Use social media marketing as a springboard to get fans and members of your audience on your email list where you can really communicate with them more consistently. Use social media to tell your story or to experiment and test out your merchandising or how you present groupings of products or really just like how you talk about your products in general. And then what are we doing to help Hillary in particular? Again, some of these things you may want to borrow So just based on our objective observations, looking at the data, asking a lot of the questions that I've posed in this episode, we're encouraging Hillary to post more Reels content, even just a little more frequently, because right now only a very small percentage of Hillary's content is in the reels format. So even though she has amazing performance on Instagram, it just makes me curious, honestly, to see how her reach would change if she started posting more reels, even if it was just once a week consistently. We're having her bring a more consistent first person narrative into her captions to focus on building that personal connection with the audience. I'm not saying first person is right for everyone, but she already wants to communicate with her audience in that way. However, it is not consistent. So we're thinking about how we can kind of go full force with that. Also diversifying her calls to action. Right now when she does have calls to action, it's to visit her website to shop. So others could be like comment on this post, share, sign up for email, etc. As we mentioned, the Enhydro Quartz, we're going to have her capitalize on the content that's most popular and make more of that, but but without like abandoning her mission or vision, striking a balance so that she is like catering to what people want to see while also being true to her creative desires. And then when it comes to Facebook content, really tailoring that based on what I mentioned before. So it seems like people on her Facebook want that more personal, um, friendly approach from her. So getting more personal, also tailoring the captions so there's links directly to product pages rather than just reposting from Instagram. And lastly, We're encouraging Hillary to really revitalize her Pinterest presence, even just by taking what is already there, re-merchandising a little bit by creating Pinterest boards, beginning even just to reshare some of her Instagram content to Pinterest, just to start getting some traction on there and seeing whether or not Pinterest starts to drive more traffic to her website. Okay, without further delay, let's talk directly with Hillary about social media marketing. Hey, Hillary, I'm excited to chat about social media today. Hi, Larissa. Great to see you. So I'm particularly interested in talking to you about this topic because there are so many things with your Instagram data that just kind of blows me away, especially when you have like a viral post or something. Some of the engagement that I see is better than like, bigger, like more corporate brands that I've worked with. So it's pretty awesome. Yeah. It's always shocking to me when, when a post goes a little crazy, it's great. I just sit there and watch and go, what is happening? (laughs) 
Do you keep the notifications on your phone? Is it just like constantly oh, gosh, showing no. you updates? <laughs> yeah. No, I haven't. I don't have notifications for anything on Instagram. It's mm-hmm. just, it would be too much. Yeah. That's smart. <laughs> So I want to know, since you've started your business, what has social media meant to you in that time? And how do you really use it to communicate with customers? Really, I just use Instagram. So um, it's it's just been a great way to stay in touch with my clients, to show them new um, work that I'm making. Uh, it's a, an amazing tool for new people to find your work. Um, I had no idea just how easy it is for people to find you or for myself to find other people as well. It's such an awesome tool. Um, And it's just been critical. You know, my business wouldn't be where it is today without Instagram. There's just, there's no way to have that reach um, just organically with, with, with anything else. Um, And it's the way I preview my upcoming collections and just overall communicate with uh, clients on a daily basis. It's really amazing to think how powerful social media can be, that it's like helped you build your business. It's it so amazing. And it's free, which yes. like, <laughs> what? <How? laughs> that, again, kind of blows my mind. It's, it's such an incredible tool. I'm so thankful for it. Definitely. So have you been actually able over the years to attribute sales directly to Instagram? And do you keep track of that? I definitely do not necessarily, um, you know, by putting like the product tag on a post, I'm not sure necessarily about that, but my DMS are really the way a lot of my custom, um, my custom jobs begin. Um, or people see something, you know, on a post or in stories and they ask me about it and we, you know, do the sale privately through that. So it's, it's definitely attributed to sales and then also just directing people to my website, getting people on newsletters and things like that. So absolutely. So do you remember when you first signed up for Instagram for your business? <laughs> I do. I do. And I was, uh, I, cause I never really used it before. And I was like, Oh God, what am I going to do with this? So I just, I just kind of threw everything at it, you know, anything I'd make, I just would post it. And then a friend of mine one day was telling me about stories. And I was like, oh, I've always been afraid to touch those little circles at the top. Like, I didn't know what they were. (laughs) And so she showed me how to make stories. And I don't know, making stories felt really, like, kind of scary to me. Um, But then, you know, you get used to it. And so, you know, posts and stories have basically been... um, you know, the way I've, I've done it. Um, but also being part of Liz Kantner's Stay Gold Collective, she would always give good tips about Instagram through that. Over the years since like Instagram's been releasing new features, like they did reels and like live, have you, has it been easy for you to l- learn the new things? Have you been able to like incorporate them into the strategy or does it always kind of feel a little challenging? I never really pay too much attention to the new stuff they put out live, I basically don't use. I've done um, a live session with Liz and I think maybe that's it. I know people really use it and to great effect, but I've just never really done it. And then reels, I'm trying to do more. It's just kind of like a spotty thing for me. You know, I'll do some and maybe then you're like, Oh, I should do a reel again. But it's just, I've never really gotten too involved in like the new things they, they put out. I just kind of like to use Instagram the way that it's comfortable for me and what works Mm -hmm. for me. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. So how over the years, I'm sure your approach as you learned more, as you got more comfortable with it, that it evolved. So can you speak to that? How has it changed? Um, well, definitely the photography has changed that just the consistent, once, you know, you f- kind of figure out what works and then I've just stuck with that. So the photography really has evolved to something that's just very simple and minimal and very product focused. Um, I generally post on the same days, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. They just seem to be good for me. And, um, so that's kind con- and that's not always the case. Um, and I just have gotten more comfortable with, with stories, just, just putting things up there, um, you know, process pictures and things like that. I, I think one of the things I do um, 
struggle with is not to overshare, like, because there's, there's so much stuff in this world that really bothers me and that I feel strongly about. And so for a while I was really in my stories, you know, forwarding a lot of things, you know, that I care deeply about and I would always feel a little uncomfortable about it. But then I also thought I want people to know where I stand on these issues. Mm -hmm. And I think kind of where I've landed is I'm just kind of not doing that anymore because Mm -hmm. I think it just, it's like not, I don't want people to like be like, Oh, what am I going to, you know, what am I going to get if I look at Hillary's stories? Is it something that's going to like make me feel bad about my day? Like, I just want people to feel good and see nice things and be happy. Yeah. So that's that's something I struggle with. Yeah. Because there's so many things that are important to me, but I can't just be the mouthpiece for that all the time. Mm -hmm. That just makes me curious. Do you also have like a personal Instagram or is this the only account that you use on Instagram? I have a personal Instagram I don't put anything on it. I haven't put anything on it for, I don't, I mean, years. And I just have it be private. And I just tell people to go to Hillary Fig Jewelry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If they want totally. to. Because I, I, I can't manage two accounts. Yeah. <laughs> it's too much. It's too much. It's too much. Yeah. <laughs> so speaking to that, you mentioned kind of this one challenge. Are there any other things about Instagram that feel frustrating or even like limiting to you with how you want to communicate? your business to customers? Yeah. I mean, I I don't know what the algorithm is, what they're doing, but you know, everyone talks about the algorithm, but it is definitely something I notice where people just, you know, they just won't show your posts all of a sudden or people that I follow all of a sudden I'm like, I'm not seeing that person's posts anymore. And so you have to like go find that person, you know, like a bunch of stuff, maybe make a few comments so that it starts to pop back up into your feed. It's something that's very frustrating to me. Oh, yeah. Another thing that frustrates me is all of the ads and you can hide them after a while. And then there's all these sponsored posts. But one thing that I've learned from my followers is that most of them, a lot of them have found me because Instagram has told people to follow me. Mm -hmm. So I've had clients come to me and say, oh, I saw your ads on Instagram. And I'm like, I don't do ads on Instagram. And they say, oh, well, Instagram told me to follow you. And so I'm, it's like one of those things where I'm like, well, that's awesome. I'm super thankful for that. But when I see it in my own feed, it can be, it just seems to clog it up with a bunch of content that I don't want to see. That's really interesting. I wish I knew like how that happens or what the logic is behind who sees what, but like, that's really great feedback to hear from people that they just discover you on Instagram. I think that's hard for a brand accomplished these days to just like get organically found on the platform. Yeah. I'm not sure what uh, made that start happening, but I would say probably in the last year they've been doing that. For me, I'm like, yay, thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, Instagram. <laughs> Thanks, Instagram. <laughs> so what are some things you've been wanting to try with social media that you just haven't had a chance to, or maybe you don't know how to approach? Um, I think Pinterest is the one thing that I would really like to have more of a presence on. And I do, I am on there and I do post some things or pin some things. I'm not sure of the right terminology even to use, but I'm just not sure if I'm doing it right. I don't fully understand how I should be doing it. I know that I probably need to like engage more with my, like personally engage more with my followers and on Instagram and like maybe have some more videos and things of me talking. I know that I always like it when I get to see people that I follow. I I like to see their faces and hear them talking. So I should probably do a little bit more of that too. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people struggle with that. It's hard to know what to say or like, is this boring or (laughs) whatever. Um, Right. Or a lot of times I'm at my studio and I just look, you know, I just kind of look dirty. And I know that like people are like, but you're a maker. We want to see. But like sometimes I don't want to show. I've got like dirt on my face or, you know, grimy fingernails (laughs) and things like that. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That's understandable. It was interesting when I was looking at 
the data, and I had mentioned this to Hillary, um, when we looked at Facebook, the posts that perform well on there are totally different from the posts that perform well on Instagram, even though it's the same posting schedule. And what seemed to do really well on Facebook were the ones, or at least there was one post in particular where Hillary was like reintroducing herself, showing pictures of her in her studio. And I thought it was really interesting because I feel like that speaks to the nature of Facebook. Instagram is a lot of people just like scrolling, looking at nice things. Maybe they're like shopping or looking for like recommendations of things they want to buy. Facebook, a lot of times people go to see like what their friends are up to or their family or to connect with people. And so when their feed on Facebook gets interrupted with something that's like more product oriented or promotional, it probably feels more easy to ignore than something that feels like, oh, that's my friend. Or even if they don't know you personally, it feels more like appropriate for the platform. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense because there's a lot of the people that follow me on Facebook are people from high school. There you go. <laughs> that, I haven't even, that I haven't even really kept in touch with. And I don't mm -hmm. think they follow me on Instagram. So it, it is, yeah, I think it's more of a, you know, more of a personal type of platform. Yeah. I've also noticed with some other brands that, especially if they cater to a customer that's maybe like, 50s or 60s. I don't know what it is about Facebook, but there are a lot of groups on there and community oriented content where like people of a certain age, that's just like where they tend to gather more so. Sure. And um, I think if a brand has like a strong personality as the designer or maker, and they're able to build that sense of community with their customers and their age group, it's like, an explosive thing. It's just like this mm -hmm. perfect storm of the platform, the people, the the brand. So I'm not saying that's appropriate for you, but it's kind of something to think about when you're tailoring content for that platform. Mm -hmm. So we did a social media audit and strategy for Hillary, where we kind of looked at the current state of the brand, um, also dove into some of the data of the top performing posts and kind of gave suggestions and then a strategy for her to pursue. And definitely the thing that we're going to play with the most and help Hillary with is the Pinterest part, because that's something where I think there's potential, but it just hasn't really been explored enough. So that's one thing I'm really excited about. But I'm kind of curious, like, what were some things that surprised you or some takeaways that you had from that audit? Um, one of the things that I try to do with Instagram is direct people to my website, obviously. And, you know, one of the things that I try to do there is get people to sign up for my newsletter. Um, but you made a really good point in the audit that on my personal profile page, I just say to sign up for my newsletter, go to hillaryfink.com and there's the link. But I'd never thought about pop-up blockers and these things that people have. Maybe they go to my site and the mailing list pop-up doesn't, doesn't pop up. And so um, we had talked about doing like a separate landing page for something like that. So that was something that really opened my eyes to just kind of like, uh, you know, something that, that can end up being way more efficient and way more um, productive for my business. Um, and then, I mean, there's so much about Facebook in it. And I have to say, like, Facebook, I'm just, uh, I really wish I had the, I really wish I had more interest in being more involved on Facebook. Um, you had some really great tips and I know we've talked personally about how to engage more on Facebook. So that whole section is something that is definitely like a challenge to me and I'm going to try to do better at. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see. Um, and then I liked the, you made a point about like my captions on Instagram being more consistent with the voice, with first person, with really having those be a point to connect with the clients. Hillary had mentioned that she likes to sometimes just keep things minimalist. I think she even said she likes when it sounds more like a haiku. And I like that. I think that's a strong element of the brand voice. But then 
we just had these shifts sometimes where she was speaking personally, and then we lost that a little bit in some of the other captions. And so we were just exploring ways that she could still maintain that vision, but maybe just like put something that makes it feel like it's coming from her. Definitely. Yeah. I, I think it's, it's possible. A lot of times it's just a matter of time and, um, you know, feeling that type, you know, creative in a wordsmith kind of a way when I'm writing, when I'm writing captions. <laughs> yeah. I have to say that's one thing. I, I don't think that a tool like chat GPT is good for like coming up with captions from scratch necessarily. But if you already have like a line or you're just toying with like some words and you ask it to give you options, that's a really great way to break out of like a, a block that you might have around something mm -hmm. like that. And going back to what you said about the email sign up landing page, <laughs> is maybe this is bad, but I just like as a marketer, I just assume that every single person has like a zero attention span because mm -hmm. so everything needs to be like as easy as straightforward as possible. I even know sometimes I'll click on links that I see like on Instagram because for like a magpie for a second, I'm like dazzled by it and I'm like, ooh, what's this? shiny thing and then like two seconds later I like forgot what I was even doing because like I got a text message or like an email notification oh, yeah. popped up and so you're Absolutely. there and you're like wait what was I looking at like I don't even remember totally so you kind of have to just like assume that about everyone and find ways to like make it easy and straightforward and logical and then mm -hmm. with the Facebook stuff I agree. I mean, sh she doesn't have a ton of engagement on there. Are you sorry? You don't have a ton of engagement on there. So it's kind of like uh, how much effort do we really want to put into this? But there there are some like tiny tweaks I think we mm -hmm. can do just to maximize like what is happening there right now. Yeah. And we had also talked about um, starting to use one of the planning uh, tools mm -hmm. like later. And I used to use it for Instagram. I didn't realize you can also use it for Facebook and for Pinterest. So mm -hmm. I think moving forward, I just think that's going to be, you know, a way more efficient way for me to be on all of these platforms. Well, thanks, Hillary. That's all the questions I have for you today about social media. I'm really looking forward to continuing to explore this more as we move forward. Thanks, Larissa. It was a fun conversation. What did you think about today's interview? Are you excited to keep following Hillary on this journey? I highly encourage you to check out Hillary's website. That's hillaryfink.com and follow her on Instagram at Hillary Fink Jewelry. And I'll put those links in the show notes as well. Let me know in a podcast review or YouTube comment what you think about this new journey. Okay, let's get into the gold mine. Welcome to another edition of the gold mine, a segment where I get personal and share insights on entrepreneurship, mindset, success, growth, and all things business. In this week's gold mine, I really want to emphasize at this time of year, the power of reflection, especially as we're like on the edge of a pivotal time for most jewelry businesses. So when I release this episode, it will be the last week of August. We're not quite in Q4 yet, but the holiday buzz is definitely starting to build. So summer may still be around, but September, I feel being in this industry now, for a good amount of time. It inspires a new mindset I, I see, and it forces jewelry business owners to have new priorities. Whether you want to or not, it's time. So I feel like too often we find ourselves, we're really caught in a whirlwind of transitions. We're going from one season to the next, one month to the next, without really stopping to reflect. And that was has already been a theme in this episode, taking the time to step back and look at your business, your marketing more objectively to ground yourself. And this is really true if at this time of year, your personal routines are evolving, or maybe if you've been in business for a long time and you've weathered so many Q4s, 
that at this point, you're kind of just going through the motions and you're not really thinking through the strategy with intention because you're just so used to it. So I think September brings a really golden opportunity to create a strategy to plan with intent. So even if you are way ahead of the game, you've already charted your course for Q4 and the holidays, I want to encourage you to take some time to pause and revisit those plans. Are the goals crystal clear? If not, what can you do to clarify them more for yourself? How can you be more detailed about your targets, whether that's in numbers or specific outcomes? And you know from holidays past, or maybe you don't, but you can imagine it's going to be a bustling, busy time ahead that eventually will pass. But I think there are things you can really do to prepare yourself just by stepping back a little bit. So some other tips that I have for you. One, try to embrace adaptability. So it's so essential to remember that adaptability in this industry will be your best friend. I know the holiday season throws people curveballs, but if you can adjust, that will determine your success. And While you're going through Q4, even if you already have a set plan, you might even get new ideas that you want to pursue, but it's important to be open to those while also not driving yourself crazy or going totally off plan to follow a whim because those things, if you already have a strategy, those whims, those new ideas, while they may be okay to kind of add to the holiday craziness, maybe it's also a good idea to step back and say, we can try this next year or we can try this at a different time of year. So it's important to be adaptable, but also to be realistic and have balance and clarity. Definitely nurture your well-being. So this is a there's a rush coming. Don't forget to take care of yourself. When you're relaxed, you can make clearer decisions. You can be more creative, which we know is so important in this industry. So carve out moments for you to be able to step back. Don't just be on a hamster wheel through Q4 and celebrate those small wins. Even if you don't reach that like big goal that you have for holiday by the time we get to the end of the year, If you've planned appropriately and you are doing all the things you should be doing, there's going to be at least one small win. So as you journey through the season, like celebrate those things for yourself because you've done the work, you've done the planning. Not everything always works out the way we want to. So remember to reflect on the things that do go well. Just keep staying proactive. I know you've got this. If you've been winging holiday seasons up to this point, let's transform that. Start documenting your journey. Jot down observations that you have in real time. Pave the way for that successful holiday season. And also like anticipate the challenges that you may have. And before they come, try to... Almost set your future self up for success and kindness. Seek solutions ahead of time when you do have a spare moment so that you can reduce those future stressors. I know one thing about this industry, planning is so important. Foresight is everything because so many businesses are dependent on seasonal fluctuations. So dive into September, not just with clarity, not just with purpose, but also with knowledge that the preparation you're doing right now will pave the way for success in the future. And I hope that inspires you to take some time to think about holiday, even if you're still wearing shorts and sipping on margaritas by the pool. And in that case, you should share one with me. (laughs) What did you think? Let me know in an Instagram DM podcast review or YouTube comment. Did you have any questions about today's episode? You can always email me Larissa. That's L-A-R-Y-S-S-A at joyjoya.com. If you love this podcast, please share it with a friend who'd appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe as well as leave a review on Apple Podcasts. 
If you're completely new to digital marketing, then you'll want to purchase and read a copy of my book, Jewelry Marketing Joy. Visit joyjoya.com book for more information.